Welcome to Lecture Online. Now we're going to do an example of a three-dimensional problem, an equilibrium problem in three dimensions, I should say. Here we have a sign hanging from a wall right here at point A. The sign has a weight of 270 newtons. It is eight meters long. It is also being held up by two cables, cable one and cable two. Cable one is attached at this point right here. Cable two is attached at this point right there. Notice that cable one is attached to the very end of the sign right here. Cable two is attached at a point six meters away from the wall. So what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the actions at A, the force in the y direction, the force in the z direction, the force in the x direction. Also, I'm trying to find tension one and tension two. Once we find tension one and tension two, the other forces will come out quite easily because all we have to do there is simply add up all the uh, components in the x direction, the components in the y direction, the components in the z direction, and they should add up to zero. Before we can go ahead and solve this problem, we should find the direction cosines of each of these cables. We want to know what the direction is in which the, the tension pulls relative to the x, y, and z axis. So let's start with cable one. Tension one, what we're going to do here is figure out the distance, the length of the cable in the x, the y, and the z direction. Notice in the x direction, it would be eight meters. In the y direction, it is four meters. And in the z direction, it is eight meters. So we're simply looking for the magnitudes of those so we don't have to worry about the signs yet. So just the magnitudes. If we want, now we want to find the length of the cable, that will be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So it would be eight squared plus four squared plus eight squared. And let's see here, that's 64 plus 64, which is 128 plus 16, which is 144. The square root of 144 is 12. So the length of the cable is 12, which means that the direction cosines, uh, let's see, that's alpha, beta, and gamma. So that would be for the x, the y, and the z direction. Again, I just, were, I just need to know the magnitude. The direction is not important. If it's negative or positive, we'll figure that out later. The direction cosines simply are the magnitude the size between the direction of the cable and the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. In the case of the x-axis, it's the x component divided by the total length. So it's 8 divided by 12, which is 2 thirds. In the case of the y direction, that would be 4 divided by 12, which is 1 third. And in the z direction, that would be 8 divided by 12, which is 2 thirds. So these are the three direction cosines for the first cable. Let's find the direction cosines for the second cable. So for T2, in the x direction, notice that's only 6 meters in this case. In the y direction, that is equal to, let's see, 2 meters. And in the z direction, that is equal to the 3 meters right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll take that back. The y direction is 3 meters. The z direction is 2 meters. I had those reversed. So 3 for the y and 2 for the z. And make sure I did that correctly. For, yep, right there. The, the length of that cable, that would be the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Let's see, that's 36 plus 9 is 45, that's 49. The square root of 49 is 7, so the length of that cable is 7, which allows us to find the direction cosines for that cable. So we have alpha, I'll call them sub 2 for the second cable, beta, and gamma. For the Direction cosine relative to the x-axis, that would be 6 divided by 7. For the y-axis, that's 3 divided by 7. And for the z-axis, that's 2 divided by 7. So these are the direction cosines for the second cable. So now we're ready to solve for T1 and T2. And the best way to go about doing that would be to find the moment, because remember, since everything is equilibrium, the moment should add up to zero as well. So what I can do is I can say that the sum of all the moments in all the directions add up to zero. And of course, that the moment can be found by taking the position where the force acts, in this case, where the cable one acts and where cable two acts, and multiply that times the individual forces, right? In this case, it'll be the tension on the first cable, the tension on the second cable, and the weight of the, of the uh, sign. So there'll be three forces, we'll have to do this three times. And so let's find for cable number one, let's find the moment, and that will be equal to the position vector, multiply times the force. So let's go ahead and put a matrix together. The first row that will be the unit vectors in the three directions. The second uh, row here will be the magnitudes, not just the magnitudes, but also the directions 
of the um, position where these act. So when we deal with the first cable, the first cable acts here. That's a distance of 8 meters away in the x direction. That's a positive 8. Notice that it's 0 in the y and 0 in the z direction. There's no components there. So that's 0 and 0. And the force now, notice that the force acts in this direction, right? The cable pulls in this direction. So it pulls in a negative x direction. It pulls in a positive y direction. And it pulls in a negative z direction. So we multiply the tension times the direction cosines, but since the tension is the same for all three, we can factor out the tension, call it tension one, and then here we place the direction cosines, but remember, for the x direction it'll be negative, so it's minus two thirds. For the y direction it'll be a positive direction because it's upward, so it would be positive one third, and the z direction, it's in the negative z direction, it would be minus two thirds. And so that will give us the moment caused by the, the first cable, tension 1. Uh, we can say that the moment in this case is equal to, that would be uh, I times this, that's 0, that would be minus J, minus J times, it'll this times this minus this times this, so it'll be 8 times a minus 2 thirds, 8 times a minus 2 thirds, and multiply times t1. So there's only one component there. So we have ij, now we take k, so plus k times, notice when we uh, cross out this and cross out that, we hide this and hide that, we have to multiply this here. The, so we have 8 times 1 third, and it'll be 0 times this, which is 0 times t1. This is the moment caused by cable 1, so I'll just go ahead and say this is the moment caused by cable 1. I think we should simplify that a little bit. Let's simplify it. So the minus times the minus becomes a plus, so moment 1 is equal to, um, that would be 16 over 3 T1J. And here that would be plus 8 over 3 T1K. So that might be a better way to write it. There we go. So now we have the moment caused by cable 1. Let's now figure out the moment caused by cable 2. So for cable 2, the moment is going to be equal to, again, we have I, J, and K. We need the direction vector here for the second cable, which is 6 in the x direction, and 0 and 0 for the y in the z direction. So it's a positive 6, 0 and 0. And then for the the components of the tension, we can factor out a T2, just like we did for T1, and then here we place the direction cosines, which are right here. Make sure we get the right signs. Notice that it's pulling in the negative X direction, the positive Y direction, and the positive Z direction. So that would be a minus 6 sevenths, a positive 3 sevenths, and a positive 2 sevenths. Okay, working that out, we get moment 2 is equal to, if I pick the i, notice I'll have zeros over here, so I don't have to worry about the i, minus j times, that would be 6 times 2 sevenths, that would be 12 sevenths times t2, and um, I take plus k times 6 times 3 sevenths, which is 18 sevenths, multiplied times t2. So here I, ha I have the second moment caused by the second cable. And finally, I need to find the moment caused by the weight of the sign. So it would be moment three. And that would be equal to the matrix. So we have again I, J, and K. Notice that the position at which this acts, this acts at the center of mass here. But we do have to take into account that we have the line of action of the force, and it's the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point where it rotates, so it would be only the x direction is important here. That would be a positive 4 meters. Zero if the y direction, zero for the z direction. Remember, it's the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to where the, the moment is acting at this point, so that would be a positive 4 in the x direction only. Now, as far as the force itself, Notice that the force is pushing in a negative y direction. This would be 0 in the x direction, a negative 270 in the y direction, 
and a zero in the z direction. So that will give us the moment caused by the weight of the sine. So this is equal to, um, hmm, if I pick the i, I get nothing but zero. So if I pick the j, I get nothing but zero. So if I pick the k, so it's k times 4 times a minus 270, that would be minus 1080. And that's it. That would be the moment, say, m sub 3. That's the moment caused by the sine. Now remember what I said here, that the sum of the moments, and of course that would be in the x, the y, and the z direction, I have to add up to zero. So we're going to take all the components of the moments in the x direction, add them up, set them equal to zero. All the components of the moments in the y direction, add them up and set them equal to zero. And take all the components in the z direction, add them up and set them equal to zero. And hopefully that will help us find t1 and t2. All right, starting with the, uh, do we have any in the i direction? I only have j components and k components. So there's only two components that are left. So the moment in the j direction, so that would be the moment in the y direction is equal to the sum, the sum of the moments in the y direction is equal to zero, is equal to. Over here, for the y direction, we have a positive 16 over 3 t1. 16 over 3 t1. Over here, we have a minus 12 over 7 t2. Minus 12 over 7 t2. And nothing from this right here. But that adds up to zero. So there's our first equation relative to the y-axis. Now let's add up the sum of all the moments in the z-direction. And in the z-direction we have an 8 thirds t1. So that's equal to zero. So that's 8 thirds t1. Over here, in the z-direction we have an 8, 18 over 7 t2 plus 18 over 7 t2. And finally, we have a minus 1,080, minus 1,080. And so this gives us our second equation. And there's two equations and two unknowns we're now able to solve for T1 and T2. So what we're going to do here is solve for T1 in terms of the second and then plug that into our second equation. Hmm. Let's see here. Let's do that. So moving this across, we get 12 over 7 t2 equals 16 over 3 t1. And then multiplying both sides by 7, divided both sides by 12, we get t2 is equal to 16 times 7, divided by 12 times 3, times t1. The 12 and the 16 are divisible by 4, so this would be 3, that would be 4, so it's 28 over 9. So T2 is equal to 28 over 9 T1. And finally, with a calculator, 28 divided by 9, we get T2 is equal to 3.111 T1. So now we have a relationship between T2 and T1. T2 in terms of T1, we can now plug that into our second equation and solve for T1. So we have 0 is equal to 8 over 3 T1 plus 18 over 7 times T2, and T2 is 3.111 times T1, minus 1080, and this should allow us to solve for T1. So moving everything all over to one side, and we have 18 over 7, so times 18 divided by 7, that would be 8. So this is 0 is equal to 8 over 3 T1 plus 8 T1 minus 1080. So simplifying this a little bit more. So that would be uh, 24, 24 over 3 plus 8, that's 32 over 3. So 0 equals 32 over 3 T1 minus 1080. And finally, we can say that T1 is equal to 1,080 divided by 32 divided, divided by 3. So that would be 1,080 times 3 divided by 32. And we get T1 is 101.25 newtons. So that's the tension on T1. Now, of course, since we have this equation, we can find the tension on T2. So T2 is equal to... 3.111 times T1, 
and T1 is equal to 101.25 newtons. So times 3.1111 equals, and we have 315 newtons for T2. Now, how do we find the X, Y, and Z components? Now, I'm out of room on the board, but what we can do, just do a, a quick little review of that. Remember that we take the sum of all the forces in the X direction, and they should add up to zero. So what are all the forces in the X direction? Well, we have the X component of T1 and the X component of T2. So we say uh, T1 in the X direction, that would be minus, right? So that would be uh, equals to minus T1 times the direction cosine. So it would be times 2 thirds. That will give us the X component of T1. Then we add the X component of T2, which would be right here. That would be minus T2 because it's also acting in the negative X direction times the direction cosine for the second one. That would be times 6 over 7. And then we add to that plus the reaction force at the wall, F sub X. And since we know that this is equal to 0 and we know what T1 and T2 is equal to, we can very easily solve for F sub X, you know, because we know that the total sum of all the force in the X direction add up to zero. We do the same for the y and the same for the z direction, which is fairly clear, and that's how we find the reaction forces at point A. So that's how we do this type of problem. Again, find the direction cosines of the cables that are acting on the problem here. Also find the direction, well, here we don't have to find the direction cosine because it's only one direction. Then find the moments caused by all, the, all three forces, T1, T2, and the weight of the sine. We know that the X components, the Y components, and the Z components add together for each of the moments should add up to zero because everything is in equilibrium. That allows us to, sign, to solve for T1 and T2, and then you can solve for the reaction force at A. And that's how we do a problem like this.